good evening everyone a very very happy new year to all of you from women who win i am rachna yadav and i uh, am starting our series of insta live which is where we are going to interview our members because www we believe every woman has a unique story and every story needs to be told and you never know which story is going to inspire whom so today on our very first insta live series we have a very very beautiful guest with us her name is aditi das chakravarti she is a singer and she is come joining us all the way from singapore i am calling aditi on the screen aditi would you be able to come and join us hi aditi hi very warm welcome to our very first series we are very happy to host you as a guest very first guest of our insta live series um thank I'll just you give, i'll just give a very quick introduction about you aditi and then i want people to explore about you as we go ahead so aditi is a singer she's also a mother of a 7 year old son she was born in kolkata brought up in an environment where music was her environment she is a professional singer she has her own band she has a youtube channel she was singing at, uh, in her band when she was in uh, gurgaon and now she is in singapore still pursuing her uh, music as a passion as a profession and spreading her beautiful voice across the world so aditi thank you so much for joining us uh, this brings me to a, our very first question how did music happen to you aditi first of all happy new year everyone and secondly thank you so much rachna it's always a pleasure to talk to you it's always a pleasure to meet you i'm waiting to meet you face to face we've met virtually a few times yeah. and thank you for the question it's a beautiful question i'd love to answer that so how music happened to me is actually it happened to me even before i was born because i was born uh, to a musical womb my mom is a rabindra sangeet singer she is also a teacher of rabindra sangeet rabindranath tagore's songs so i am pretty much born into music and all my growing up years have been uh, surrounded by music and musicality so there was a lot of that happening around me when i was growing up my mom was Uh, constantly going for a rehearsal sometimes rehearsals and jams were happening at home so musicians were coming home she used to sing for all in their radio uh, so she would go for her recordings she used to take classes so starting from children to grown up people used to come home to learn music from her so music was always a constant part of my growing up and i don't remember okay so she tells me that when i was very small whenever she take out the harmonium to sing i used to sit on top of her harmonium monia because i used to think it's a small stool or something and she says that i pretty much started singing when i started speaking she says that when i started speaking i used to already do some tunes like i would try to uh, make some tune few tune few full sounds with my voice and whenever we would go anywhere i would take the window seat and I, i would sing to myself and hum to myself she used to find it very interesting because i could hardly talk but i used to apparently um to make those baby sounds also in some kind of tune so a tune i guess music and tune was a part of me when i was growing up but i was also very rebellious so i refused to learn formally from mom but uh, because i was growing up surrounded by so much of music i knew songs so sometimes at you know uh, programs she would play the harmonium and i would be tiny and sitting next to her and singing so i was singing from a very early age but i caused her a lot of trouble because i refused to learn and i used to stop going for music classes yeah <laughs> it, it, it's making me smile aditi because uh, it reminds me of that song you know that mithun chakravarti song that says मैं तब भी गाता था जब बोल पाता नहीं था सो दिस इज वेरी ट्रू इन योर केस इज इट इट क्वाइट ट्रू यस यू कुड से दैट यू आर इंटरेस्टिंग सो अम अदिति यू आर आल्सो प्रोफेशनल सिंगर सो हाउ डिड दिस यू नो एनवायरनमेंट यू यू नो ग्रोन अप इन दिस म्यूजिकल एनवायरनमेंट एंड हाउ डिड यू मूव टू अ प्रोफेशनल बीइंग अ प्रोफेशनल सिंगर या सो 
Um, that's a very, very interesting question, a very key question. Like I said, I, I grew up with music and music was always a part of my life, but I would never do it professionally. I would never charge anyone for singing, you know. The professional quote-unquote word comes in only when you there's commercial angle involved to right. it. And that happened at a later stage in my life. I, I moved to Delhi and I started living in Delhi. And in Delhi, I actually took formal education in music. I took a training in Hindustani classical vocals. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, then initially I started getting very interested in the semi-classical Bollywood songs. So I would sing a lot of those songs, you know, like Lal Ish, Mohi Rang De Lal, those were the songs that I was really singing. And from there, gradually, I found other, like mom used to tell me about, my mom used to sing that song, some very semi-classical old numbers, like, oh, Sajana. She used to sing that all the time. So there are some songs which were semi-classical old songs, which I never took any interest in. But when I learned by the Sunny Classical, I started getting very, very involved and uh, very interested. And then gradually the new Bollywood also came in. And then with my brother, who's also a vocalist, he's my co-vocalist in our band, which is called Seven and a Half, we formed a band. Mm -hmm. because we also had musical friends people who would play instruments so for us it was very easy to just come together get together at my place sing play and then we realized hey i mean we can actually do this i mean because we are sounding quite good mm -hmm. and then we started doing it um professionally uh, but um yeah so uh, i i have been a professional singer and i have sang i have been fortunate to sing in lots of forums and lots of shows but uh, I, I should also mention here that my biggest obstacle in turning from a singer by passion to a singer by profession was this, because I'm very bad at asking for money and I'm very bad at marketing myself. So I have been fortunate to do some wonderful shows, but I would say that was God's kindness and not my marketing skills, because neither can I market myself, nor can I ask for for a particular price. I mean, I'm so if somebody is throwing a party and says, we would like you to sing. So I would say, okay, generally my band would, this is my rate. That itself is very difficult for me to say. And then they would be like, oh, but you know, we would really like you, but we can't really play that, pay that. I'd be like, okay, fine. I mean, it's okay, all right. So <laughs> I would let go of what is the usual, what I should be uh, probably getting out of a commercial gig because I'm, quite a bad person when it comes to marketing myself. It's very interesting you're saying that, Aditi, because um, we've also experienced uh, many a times we as women also, uh, we're not very sure that, you know, we don't feel it's right to ask for money. And even if absolutely you know, when you to market yourself, you don't know, you know, whether it is the right thing to do or not, or how to go about it. Whereas, absolutely. you know, the reality is that you might be having a fantastic product, but how how will the world know what you are, what you have to offer? Absolutely. So marketing is a very, very important aspect and I can really connect. It is, I can just connect to what you said because I also got this feedback from a gentleman who is a very uh, kind of a, an ideal for me in my field. So in mm. this journey, how to market yourself, do you think, your association with WWWSF, uh, you know, group, did it help you anywhere and how? It has helped me so much because, okay, so when I first connect, when, when I connected with WWW, almost instantly Simi uh, spoke to me and she said, why don't you do a musical live for us? So it was the first. I remember that. Day, yeah? And yes, it was the first live. And you know, live is a different ball game altogether. I may have sung on stage a few times. I mean, I have been fortunate to do many shows, physical shows, but a physical show is a different ball game. And, a, and on whatever social media platform, be it Insta, be it Facebook, be it Zoom, be it StreamYard, whatever platform, it's a different ball game altogether. There are lots of other things that you have to make yourself familiar with. So initially when I when when Simi suggested it, I was very excited, but I was also very nervous because right. I had never done it. But you know, WWW is such a forum that Simi, you, 
the forum itself, the sisters, the girls, they made me so comfortable and I was so at home that my first Facebook Live went like a breeze. It was yeah. just over before I even knew that I was doing something which is supposed to be challenging. It was like cakewalk for me okay. because I got that comfort factor. I got that warmth from everyone around. And that has been such a good beginning for me, such an auspicious. I, I also consider it um, a sign because, because I did the first one for you. Then on, I've done so many. I've done numerous Facebook Lives and I've been approached by so many people, so many organizations, so many uh, clusters of people, so many groups that now it's it's, it's become quite easy for me. And, I'm, I, and, and I am so fortunate that now it's no longer a challenge. Now I don't sit to fret over it or think about what am I going to do with this and I started then www gave me the forum to to be a judge for a musical show I, ha I have done that before but I have done it for physical shows I've been part of auditioning process for a big show for a big stage show that happened I had to audition lots of children I have been judged for competitions but I have never done it virtually it has always been a face-to-face -face physical uh, appearance kind of thing this was the first virtual show that I judged and again it was a fabulous experience fabulous very rewarding because you get to hear so much of music you get to hear so many people who are so passionate about music that has also been a very good beginning for me but after that I have again judged many virtual shows so I would say yeah. www has been like the lucky charm for me which has consistently worked wonderfully for me i'm i'm really glad to hear that you know this platform has helped you aditi and helped you in the way that you are explaining uh, because actually this is straight away brings me to the next question uh, which is you know during lockdown it was a very challenging time for everyone no matter what profession what you know uh, what whatever you are into and this you kind of have answered that but i still want you to take a quick you know minute and tell us how did you still pursue continue to pursue your profession your uh, passion of music in that challenging time yeah. of lockdown and yeah that's a very important question and i'm sure when i give my answer all my musician friends are going to agree with me you know my last trip to india was in december after that i was supposed to go in april in december when i visited india i did shows mm -hmm. i did physical shows i was there in delhi for about i think 10 days and i did three shows mm -hmm. because i had to take out time to go to the taj mahal i had to spend time with friends and family but i still did three shows in delhi and I was supposed to go back in April and things were lined up for April, but it never happened because of lockdown and things like that. But uh, two things. One, this lockdown and the fact that we were uh, forcibly put away from performing has given us a huge opportunity to practice as musicians, as, as a vocalist, as anybody who is play, playing an instrument, sometimes you are so jam packed with jams and shows and you have a playlist and you're just going through the playlist and you're just doing your timing, you're doing your metronome, you're doing your tempo, you're doing your introductions, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, what do you call it, the in-between pieces of music. We're just composing for ourselves. We are not doing our arias. And that on the long run is very, very detrimental to anyone, to anyone who is in music. Everyone will agree with me that there is no substitute to Riaz. And we often ignore that because we are doing, we're preparing to go on the stage and do things. We're not singing for ourselves and we're not singing to develop our skills. Mm -hmm. So that break I have really used to my advantage. I should have done more. I, I agree, but I have done my Riaz. I have done a lot of singing for myself. I've tried to develop my voice. I've tried to develop new skills. I've tried to better myself, one. Second, the virtual medium. When I did the first Facebook Live for, for a WWW, when Simi approached me, I had no idea what a world the virtual medium is. It is a world of shows. It is a world of opportunities. It is a world of showcasing yourself really. And I've done it so much for so many, even now, you know, there are, and God forbid me if I sound like I'm, I'm 
uh, showing off. I'm not. Even now, there are groups that have approached me for lives and I'm unable to give them dates because of different things that I'm doing. So it's a world. It's a world of opportunity. We just need to capture, grab it with both our hands. We need to become a little bit technologically savvy and we can crack it. You're right. You're absolutely correct, Aditi, because this of this uh, pandemic has actually opened a lot of opportunities for a lot of other members who were very uh, scared of technology. But now they know that, you know, online is the way online is the new way of going, you know, moving ahead. Absolutely. So, you know, some of our audience are also asking questions, which uh, actually brings me to my next question. And that is, how do we get our children interested into classical music? And what would be your advice for the budding musicians or the budding singers? Right. Great questions. These are very forward looking questions and questions which are focused towards the future. So wonderful questions. So the first part of the question is about our children. Okay. Now in this, my uh, advice would uh, always be to the parents, not to the children. And I would not even call it an advice. I would just say the guideline yeah. that you may follow because somehow it that is the guideline that happened in my childhood and whether I'm a good singer bad singer I'm not even going to go there I have very good taste in music so when you as a parent are playing music be it on tv be it on your Bose speaker be it on whatever be very very mindful of what you are playing you may enjoy a Hindi rap or, or a Hindi party song a lot, and there is no harm in playing that also, but time it. If that is what you're continuously playing on your systems, if all that the child gets to hear are a few nonsensical lyrics and a lot of beats, he may develop a wonderful, he or she may develop a wonderful, wonderful sense of rhythm, but that will not be taste in music. So, so as a parent, if you want the child to develop interest in good music, in classical music, as you were saying, classical music is a conditioned taste. So if you play something like a rag behag for a child, the child will not appreciate that. But play tasteful music, play music that will captivate their imagination. You can play uh, Bollywood also. Bollywood also has a lot of songs which are influenced by classical music which are very melodious so interspace that you can make uh, the child listen to a few party numbers because they all like to move their bodies and dance but make sure that it's interspersed with a few good pieces of music one second even when the trigger even if there's an artistic trigger which is not say musical say for example both you and your child are in a beautiful park where it is all greenery or all, all around beautiful flowers do mention music just mentioned to him, do you remember that uh, song? Um, uh, whatever, I mean, say if it is a rainy day. Um, you don't have to sing. You don't have to play it on your system. Just mention. Even that mention is a trigger. You see a beautiful picture, mention. Doesn't this color remind you of a song or something like that? So those triggers always work. Secondly, for the budding singers, you asked me, see, there's no uh, end to learning. I am also a budding singer in my place, but I will simply tell you what works for me. There is a Hindi phrase which all singers should know, which is pehle kansen, fit kansen. So what you really need to work on more than your vocal skills or before your vocal skills is your hearing. Be very careful of every note when you are hearing it also when you are hearing someone else sing also analyze the notes is is the person reaching the right note is the person singing the right note even if the person we are all human okay so what you hear on mp3 or what you hear on playback there's a lot of technology that goes into it nobody can sing like that nobody can replicate that but with your voice you will have to touch the notes, but before that, you will have to know the notes. So listen, listening to yourself, listening to the harmonium. The harmonium is your guide, not the tanpura. Tan tanpura comes in later in life. Initially, it's your harmonium. Follow the harmonium, 
follow the notes and listen to good music every whatever time for me it's the night time that works after everybody sleeps off i've got my headphones on and i listen to good music for a very long time so listening is more important than developing your vocals because that's the first thing then comes your vocals and of course there's no end to developing your vocals <laughs> there is just no end it's a notion yeah perfect thank you so much i think the the advice that you're giving aditi is going to be really really useful for the people who are thinking seriously about music and i'm just moving little you know out of music and asking you one question that you can take you know 10 seconds and tell me what do you do apart from music what do you love to do Yeah. So what I love to do apart from music is, of course, spending time with my son. I've got a seven-year-old son, and he takes away a huge chunk of my time. After that, whatever is left, uh, of course, there is music, and then there's my son. And other than that, I like to read, mm-hmm. and uh, I like to travel. I'm very fond of serious fiction. I don't uh, read uh, like very light stuff. I read deep stuff, and I'm very fond of traveling. And you also paint as well, isn't it? I do, I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not a good painter, but yes, I like to dabble in colors a little bit. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, what, what are you? What is your goal as a professional singer? Next goal, uh, Aditi. See, the thing is, I am away from my country now, so there, there are a lot of shows that I cannot physically do. And I know once the world opens up, this forum of virtual shows will kind of shrink, and I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. So what I would like to do very much is one, keep developing myself, try and be the best version of myself. That is, of course, a huge goal. And the second thing is, I want to make some covers. I want to make some nice covers of songs and release it on social media. Uh, even if people don't hear it, I'm fine. I want to do it for myself. <laughs> So I, I and of course every time I sorry mm-hmm. and every time I visit my country I hope I will get to sing a little bit on stage. In fact, I will tell people our viewers to uh, look at you know your YouTube channel. We will put all of that into um, the when we put the video. We will put all of the details to so people. I request all of our viewers to look at your YouTube channel. You've got some lovely music there. I've seen them. So I can vouch for it. People can go to your Facebook page and like it and start to follow people who are looking at, you know, different activities related to music, whether it is corporate, it is professional, it is personal. People can reach out to you. So we will give that uh, information. Now we come to the very end of our conversation. This was supposed to be a very crisp and beautiful conversation, which it is uh, turning out to be. My last thing to you: we cannot let you go, Aditi, without. you know singing something for us so yeah. i want you to sing a song which is kind of a message to the people your you know aditi's new year message to the people so go on so 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 uh, thank you so much rachna it has been wonderful talking to you and it has always been wonderful being a part of www and thank you to sini also for always including me and making me feel so wanted and so loved so my message is going to be a message of hope we've had a very uh, let's say troublesome 2020 we are full of hope in 2021 so my message is also going to state uh, the same feeling of hope and overcoming difficulties and uh, shining through hope is what we need the most currently so i think that's i think so yeah i absolutely think so hope is what we need the most currently so we were talk about hope in this song and we hope that our hopes come true in this year ye hasla kaise tote ye arzu kaise ruke मुश्किल तो क्या धुंधला साहिल तो क्या तन्हाये दिल तो क्या दुंता ना ना देरे ना ना देरे ना ना दुंता ना ना देरे ना ना देरे ना राह में काहे रे तो क्या उस पर तो फिर भी चले 
Beautiful, Aditi. Thank you so much. That's very beautiful. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. This is the end of our conversation. I once once again, I would like to thank you from Vrindavan, and I would like to tell our viewers, tune in next week for on eleventh of January for our next session, and we will keep uh, we will continue to bring out beautiful stories to inspire a lot many women in their journey. Thank you so much. And all the best, everything. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.